Eastside High is a notorious school of violence and failing grades. Then came Principal Joe Clark. Armed with a bullhorn and baseball bat, Clark kicked out troublemakers on day one, ready to put it all on the line. This rebel shook things up, determined to restore self-respect and hope for Eastside's troubled students. In the 1960s, Eastside High School in Patterson, New Jersey was highly successful. Joe was a beloved teacher there. His students liked him because he made learning important things fun through kind teaching and friendly competitions. One day, while Joe was teaching, another teacher named Frank interrupted to tell him about a union executive board meeting that they weren't invited to. Joe was really mad. He stormed into the meeting and got upset with everyone. He felt they weren't supporting his ideas for making positive changes and always gave in to government pressure to stay quiet. The board members were tired of Joe's behavior, so they decided to transfer him to another school. After 20 years, Eastside High had declined drastically. It had a reputation for being a violent place. The school building looked rundown, and the students' behavior was troublesome. Bullying and violence were rampant. Students didn't respect their teachers and sometimes even attacked them. Drugs and weapons were being traded openly, as if they were everyday things. Most students struggled to pass a basic skills test. Mayor Botman worries that if the school goes under state control, he might lose the election. Now, Frank is the school superintendent, and Mr. Rosenberg is the school board attorney. They think carefully and decide that they need to bring Joe back to help. Mayor Botman isn't thrilled about this, but he agrees because he doesn't have another option. Frank and Rosenberg talk to Joe. They ask him to become the principal of East Side again. Joe initially says no. He believes the mayor is only interested in his own benefit, not the students. However, Frank persuades Joe to reconsider. He tells Joe that his previous methods haven't really made a big difference, and he shouldn't let that define his legacy. Eventually, Joe agrees to take on the role. He realizes that he has a chance to truly help the students and make a positive impact, even if it means stepping out of his comfort zone. The next day, Joe arrived at Eastside High as the new principal, ready to take on the immense challenge. He gathers the teachers for a meeting and sets a firm rule that only he talks in his meetings. Joe requests a list of students involved in trouble and asks the custodian to clean the walls, with detained students assisting. Mr. Darnell, the English teacher, is moved to being the assistant football coach. Security guards will now patrol the hallways to curb violence. All teachers are to focus on preparing students for the upcoming standardized test. The school needs a 75% approval rate, having scored under 40% last time. Later, Joe calls a school assembly. He brings the troublesome students from the list onto the stage. While moving around, Joe accidentally bumps into Kanisha. She's happy to see him, remembering him as her elementary school principal. Joe steps onto the stage and asks for quiet, but no one listens. The students causing trouble laugh when he tries to get them to sing the school song. Thinking they won't change, Joe chooses to kick out all the troublemakers. He assures the other kids that they won't be bothered anymore. He leads all the students off the stage, and this calms everyone down. Especially when Joe warns them that they could be next if they don't work hard in their studies. Later that day, Joe meets with all the parents. Lena, the mother of one of the expelled kids, is really angry and many other parents support her. But Joe doesn't give up. He talks about a few bad people spoiling things for everyone else. He explains that he had to expel 300 students to save the other 2,700. He even mentions promising to God that he would save the school. Joe's speech wins the support of most parents, except for Lena who remains angry. The next day, a student is waiting for Joe at school. Sams, who got expelled, wants to convince Joe he was wrong because he didn't do anything. But Joe can tell he's lying and takes him to the roof. Joe calls Sams a coward for not admitting his expulsion to his parents. He warns Sams about the dangers of using illegal substances, saying they could kill him. He challenges Sams, suggesting he should jump if he's that eager to die. Sams refuses and promises to improve. Joe gives him a second chance, warning that if he messes up again, He's out. During lunch, Joe visits tables to chat with students and offer advice. Joe is pleased to see Ray wearing a suit, setting a great example. This is in contrast to Sam's and his friends who dress carelessly. Joe notices them bothering a girl and makes them stand up. He talks about their clothing choices in front of everyone and asks them to sing the school song. He reminds everyone not to move during the song. When Darnell bends down to pick up trash, Joe sends him to his office. Since the boys don't know the lyrics, Joe gives them detention. He tells everyone they should be ready to sing the school song whenever asked, or there will be consequences. After that, Joe talks to the music teacher, Elliot, about the new rule. Elliot agrees, but they're preparing for a choir concert in New York. She wants their effort to be respected. Elliot confronts Joe, mentioning he doesn't handle others standing up to him well. Joe's response is to fire her and cancel the concert, so students can focus on their upcoming test. Starting now, Mrs. Powers, the pianist, will oversee the music class. Later, during a meeting with Darnell, Joe faces criticism again. 
Darnell feels he's being treated poorly and reminds Joe that these are also his students. This leads to Darnell's suspension. Vice Principal Joan attempts to reason with Joe. She explains that Darnell is more than just a coach and nobody really understands Joe's actions. Joe responds that he prefers it that way. The practice test day arrives and all students do their best while teachers closely observe. Joe is eager for the results, so he sends Joan to the school board to request the letter directly. One morning during a press event at Eastside, a student's special presentation was suddenly interrupted by an attack in the cafeteria. One of the boys who got expelled has returned and is attacking Ray with a knife. Joe acts quickly and catches the boy, wondering how he got inside. Security says someone probably let him in. In response, Joe decides to lock and chain all school doors. Later, Joe notices Kenesha looking upset. Kenesha is smart, but her grades have dropped since she lost her home because her mother doesn't want her. Determined to help, Joe takes Joan to visit Kenesha's mother at home. Kenesha's mother explains that she had Kenesha when she was young and had to focus on work. She's now trying to improve her life, but it's affecting her mental well-being. She thought it would be better to let Kenesha go to child services, but she still loved having her around. Joe promised to help her get a better job and a nicer place to live if she took Kenesha back and helped her focus on school. The news about locked doors got into the newspapers. Lena saw this as a chance to complain to the school board. Frank criticized Joe's behavior and mentioned that Lena was gathering a group to push him out, with the fire chief supporting her. Frank compared Joe's actions to how he pushed his wife away. Now, Frank plans to apologize to Elliot and Darnell. He thinks Joe should learn to respect authority if he wants others to respect him as an authority figure. Darnell got his position back, but there are still problems. When the fire chief came to the school with reporters, Joe used a bat to threaten him and make him leave. Joan attempts to share her worries about this behavior, but as usual, her concerns are disregarded. Joe is let down when he next encounters Ray. The boy visits to bid farewell as he can't continue in the school. Later, Joe discovers Sam's and his buddies fooling around in the restroom. He encourages them to sing the school song and is amazed to hear a beautiful rendition reminiscent of a church choir. The boys admit Powers taught them this version, prompting Joe to congratulate her and ask for it to be the new standard. After the test results arrive, Joe is unhappy with their mere 33% score. He gathers all teachers in the gym, blaming their inefficiency for the poor outcome, urging them to work harder. Joe plans a tutoring program and extra set of courses for remedial reading. However, a teacher points out the challenge of getting kids to attend on weekends. His idea is to visit every student's home and talk to their parents, maybe even inviting them if they can't read well. In the coming weeks, teachers and students work hard to prepare for the test, and Joe stays closely involved with his students. But Lena isn't satisfied. She and the fire chief approach Botman directly. Frank and Rosenberg try to support Joe, but they're kicked out of the meeting. Botman and Lena make a deal, she won't sway the town against Botman if he fires Joe. In return, Lena will rally support for Botman's campaign. Later, in the bathroom, Botman discusses arresting Joe for illegal chains after the test. Unaware that Rosenberg is in a stall, overhearing everything. Rosenberg tells Frank, and they rush to warn Joe. Joe quickly comes up with a plan. When the head security guard sees the chief approaching they will signal with code 10 on their walkie-talkies. Then the teachers can remove the chains temporarily. Later, Joan tries to discuss the progress of their reading program with Joe. He responds that he's too busy at the moment and that his vice principal should handle things independently without always relying on him. By the end of the day, Joan requests a transfer from Joe. She explains how frustrating it has been to work with him. She describes him as someone who acts overly important and criticizes him for targeting those who can't defend themselves. She also mentions that many staff members share her feelings, but they haven't left because they care about the students. However, Joan has reached her limit due to his lack of respect and support for the teachers, so she wants to leave. The following day, just before the assembly, Joe hands Joan her transfer papers. He talks to the kids, telling them about the school's bad reputation in town. He wants them to prove they're not like that. He thanks the teachers, especially Joan. Then, Mrs. Powers sings Lean On Me and the kids join in. They're excited to show they're not lesser to the government. Joan decides to stay as she sees the whole school united. On the test day, the students are confident as they take the exam. However, there's a school board meeting approaching. Lena can't wait any longer, so Botman allows the fire chief to get a court order. Meanwhile, at school, Kenesha finds out she's pregnant. Her boyfriend doubts he's the father, even though she insists he's the only one she's been with. Suddenly, a guard comes in, telling them the fire chief and Lena with reporters are here. Using a code 10, Joe wants to remove the chains, but the chief is prepared and has a recording of this code. Joe gets arrested for breaking fire rules, leaving Joan in charge. At night, the school board meets. Frank defends Joe's work, but Lena notes the school only scored 33% in the practice test, showing Joe didn't do well. During the meeting, all students arrive and demand Joe's release. Botman knows firing a supported man looks bad, so he asks Joe to send the students away. Joe refuses, so Botman warns about cops outside ready for trouble. If the students cause chaos, things might turn violent. Joe agrees to talk to them, mainly for their safety, not because he believes they're doing anything wrong. 
When he steps out, Lena is chatting with the kids. However, she's facing insults and being reminded of Joe's contributions to the school. When they call him a father, he's touched. Still, worries about the police remain. So, Joe steps in, reminding them to respect the law. Joan interrupts his speech, sharing the test results with fantastic news, the school has passed. Amid celebrations, Joe informs Botman that he and the state can go to hell. Joe keeps his job. Later, students conclude the evening by singing the school song. At graduation, Joe awards diplomas, sharing kind words for each student. Ready for more incredible content? Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss out on another fantastic video like this one. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.